So good afternoon. How you doing? Usually I would do a video where I can take the opportunity to make sure I get everything correct, but I'm looking at this information that I'm about to start talking about as it will take more than the eight minutes that Facebook videos will allow you to download. That's why we're doing this on Facebook Live. So things may not be as scripted as I would normally like them to be. But after certain events that have happened recently, as well as um, one of the posts that you may have seen that I posted a little while ago concerning statements made by Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Henry Barry, also with some discussions that I've had with others today concerning religion and things of that nature, it has brought me to this point where I can no longer bite my tongue. I can no longer hold it back. People are enslaved around this world because of a superiority complex that one group or one country may feel that they have over others. Let me set this up correctly by reading what some of the statements that were said. Benjamin Franklin, a scientist, said that why increase the sons of Africa by planting them in America where we have so fair an opportunity by excluding all blacks and tawnies or increasing the lovely white and red? Thomas Jefferson's president said, I advanced it, therefore, as a suspicion only that the blacks, whether originally or originally a distinct race or made distinct by, by time or circumstance, are inferior to the whites in of uh, the whites in the endowment of both body and mind. Abraham Lincoln, the one that many blacks hold up as their freedom provider. There, there is a physical difference between the white and the black races which I believe will forever forbid the two races living together. While they do remain together, there must be a position of superior and inferior, and as much as any man, I am in favor of having the superior position assigned to the white race, assigned to the white race. And probably the worst statement, but the most eye-opening statement, the statement that should help people realize what really is going on in this world and in the ether more than anything else is what was said by Henry Berry, the Virginia House um, of Representatives. We have, as far as possible, closed every avenue by which the light may enter the slave's mind. Light being a reference to knowledge. If we could extinguish the capacity, the ability, to see the light, our work will be complete. They would then be on the level of the beast of the field and we then should be safe. Beast of the field, which is why I use the, 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 the word sheep in the title of this. Because sheep, if you understand alchemy, sheep will only look for food and water. Their only concern every day is food and water. It does not matter who is their shepherd. What they are only concerned with truly is food and water. And, and, and if you understand sheep well enough, you can begin to slaughter the sheep. But if you just slaughter one sheep, as in the case of Alton Sterling, you slaughter one sheep, some will take notice, but most will go on about their day looking for food and water. That is what happens when, when a police officer slaughters a black man, and I'm not indicting all police officers, some of my friends, um, one of my best friends is a police officer, and I know that what happens in one county may not necessarily happen in another county. County. But as long as you don't slaughter too many sheep, you don't slaughter your herd too much, then the other sheep will continue to follow that shepherd. Can you understand that? Meaning that if a president sends people off to battle and as long as not too many die, people will still follow that president. They will follow that shepherd. If you are in a work environment and if not too many people are getting fired, not too many people are being mistreated, but one or two here or there, you will continue to follow that business leader. And in the case of what's going on with Alton Sterling, as long as it is only one black man who was slaughtered today by a police officer and there is not 10, 20, 30, 40 black men slaughtered by police officers on a daily basis that reaches the, the mindset, reaches the purview of people, then no one is really going to stand up. There will not be much of a, of, of a revolution. Why? Because we've been indoctrinated into a slave mindset. And here's the thing, that programming began long before you were ever born. You think that this is all new, that America came up with this? 
Yes, I read what Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Henry Berry said. But these are only, they are only repeating the same process that's been done over and over again. Now, unlike many people, I'm not going to just tell you what the situation is and how they do it. But I'm also going to talk to you about how to break it. Now, I myself am in the process of breaking it for my individual self. And anybody else who wanted to join in is more than welcome to do so. But I am of the ilk of someone who I will mention throughout this process of um, thought, the Atlantean, who says that the lips, are, the lips of wisdom are closed only to those who are ready to receive it. So this is why you have never really heard me expound deeply on a lot of things because I sit privately with most and explain how things work. So let's get into the programming. And mind you, there are distractions that occur throughout this whole process to make sure that you don't give too much attention or take too much action towards you freeing yourself. And as Henry Berry said, keeps you from ever being able to see the light and dulls your capacity. You see, in order to make a slave, I know many will just jump to the Willie Lynch letter. And the Willie Lynch letter really just kind of brings you to one small but major aspect of the entire process, which is religion. If you teach the slave your religion, and in your religion, you are the dominant force within that religion. When your religion says, slaves, be good to your masters and obey them, regardless if they are good masters or bad, and this is your Messiah saying this, you still will follow that as a slave is an amazing thing. And in all actuality, the ability for the Willie Lynch letter and, and the, the training of a slave to be able to do that, you can present this in someone's face and they will still ignore it because they've been indoctrinated to a certain point. And I will tell you why a little bit later because first I want to go through some of the, the earlier things. And if this is too long, I understand some people at work, you can always come back later because I'm going to leave this posted and I'm going to post it on um, YouTube as well. So here's the deal. The first level is government. You see, governments are not set up to help you. Governments like America, which America is not really a government, America is a corporation. If you actually look at the documentation, America is a corporation that was authorized by England. So it's not really a country. You are born into this country and given a birth certificate, which means that you have been signed over as property to the American government by your parents, which is called a straw man. I can go on for an hour just on that and how you can get your live birth. Um, certificate so that your straw man can be dissolved and you receive the funding back because you are traded on the stock market, on the world stock market, as property of debt. But the government controls you in, in, in most multiple ways. The first way is law. The government first tells you that you are free, but you are only free as far as the law allows you to be free. And if I decide to change that law today, then you are no longer free to participate in that activity. In the same way that there are some blue laws on the books right now that you will look at and say, well, that's, uh, you, okay, so in Virginia, you can go to Virginia and at 12 o'clock noon on Saturdays with a, I mean Sunday, with a whip no longer than 12 inches, you can beat your wife. That is still on the books in Virginia. In Virginia. But of course, we now have um, spousal abuse laws and things like that that will counteract that. But that law was an actual law at one time. If you took a white woman across state lines, that was against the law at one time. You see, they create laws in order to control you. Most of our drug laws are in place because they scared white people into thinking that the black crazy man who owned marijuana or heroin or cocaine was going to rape all the white women. And so they made that law that to make those drugs illegal. This information is right in front of you. You can watch any documentary on it or read it. It's right there. So, first they control you by laws. Now the thing about it, even though they wrote the Declaration of Independence, and I know it just had Independence Day, and the document itself, as it is written, has some great principles, but those principles can only become great if the men and women who are following them actually follow the principles. I had a racist um, staff sergeant when I was in the Marine Corps. One of the things that he said to me, though, that was very eye-opening, that illuminated me, a lot was the fact that he said that the Marine Corps is built on great principles. It is the men who operate them who mess it up. In that moment, he forgot to be a racist. But what he said was so true. And I believe he was looking at himself. 
to say that the principles and the laws of this country can be great, but the people who follow them utilize them for their own um, for their own protection, for their own growth of power. And and they do that so that they can maintain you as the slave. Because yeah. you being free, it would not work. Now, the other method that the government has is the police and the military. You see, they control what you can do. But in order to do that, you have to have a force of people that will allow them to do so. Now, I'm at work and I got customers, but I'm going to keep going. But you have to have a, a force, a group of people that will continue to um, to enforce those laws so that when you get, get out of hand, when you try to defend yourself, when you try to move forward in life, that these people can come about, come in, and then they will... Um, those people will come in and they can stop you from being able to move forward. I'm going to go to the back so you won't have too many distractions. But they'll stop you from being able to move forward, from being able to have and exercise the freedoms that is within the paperwork that you were guaranteed. So the second level is to have that police and have that military. The next one is education. See, the thing about it is that in order to make these laws and make this police force function, you have to educate the people on a program that you designed, that you built, that you created. And that creation is through education. You see, when they met to discuss how to create the American education system, it wasn't to develop people who can be able to exercise their freedom and to be able to uh, be self-determining. It was designed for you to learn what they want you to learn so that you then can go to work for them in their factory and continue to make them wealthy and powerful. But the worst part of the education is this. That education was also designed to make you believe that you feel indebted to those people. The fact that they use founding fathers is not by accident. They were called founding fathers so that you would look to those men as your father. And later you will see how in religion, how they want you to relate to the person who gives you the keys to heaven as your father. They want you to see these people as your father. They want you to respect them. They wanted you to not want to disobey them and go against them. So they call them your founding fathers. They call them heroes, men of renown. They give them accolades so that you will continue to praise them on a consistent basis. This is done in your educational system as well as your colleges. You are only taught enough self-esteem in order for you to participate at the different levels of life and economics that they want you to. And for those who do have the ability and the right heritage to go beyond that, they take them behind the curtain behind the, the, and see what the real wizardry that's going on, the real magic that occurs. So by controlling your education, this is how you do it. This is why they had to take education out of the home. This is why even though people are homeschooling, don't think that your homeschooling is completely without their imprint because even in your homeschooling, they still require you to maintain a certain level of structure. You still have to teach certain things. The American history books. Although we have, an, we knew when I was in junior high that Leif Erikson the Viking was the first Caucasian to come to America. I also knew that there were Africans who had came over to America prior to that. But these things could not be changed and still has, as of yet has not been changed. Why? Because it takes away from the narrative that they already had in place. The narrative that you are not prominent. That you discovered nothing. That all discoveries came from them. <laughs> Now let's think about that. How can you discover something that was already here? We know this, but in your knowledge of this, you still teach it. We still teach our kids this. We still teach ourselves this. We still go by this information. So education. Now here's the worst one. This is the one that keeps you most more. This is the one that is the second most enslaving aspect of the whole thing. Um, the second most enslaving aspect is economics. Economics. Because you can stand up and you can fight. You can say all the things you want to say. But if you can't feed yourself, if you can't feed your family, if you don't have a roof to put over your head, 
then what are you, how far are you going to keep fighting? As soon as your job is threatened, right? as soon as your job is threatened, as soon as your livelihood is threatened, as soon as it becomes difficult for you to live and to clothe yourself, at that point, you begin to say, oh, how am I going to accomplish this? Oh, I better stop talking before somebody comes in and now I'm not able to work, I'm not able to feed myself, I can't feed my family. See, they control your economics because your economics also say, how much medical care can I have? How can I take care of my health? How can I keep living? Because at the end of the day, your life, your ability to breathe becomes more important than your ability to to learn truth and to speak truth and to be truthful. You see, every time somebody does step up too far, they, they want to shut them down. The powers that be must shut them down because if they don't and the people begin to realize and rise up, then what do you have left? You don't have anything left. You can't stop the people then. If the sheep decide to become wolves, even if the sheep, the sheep decide to become, become goats, I like to use that term goats. Why? Because a goat is curious. A goat has his head up. At my at my um, father's funeral last year, I was speaking to a minister. She remarked about the fact that the things that I said concerning my father and his death and at his funeral were things that she knew, but she said that my sheep cannot hear that. And as a shepherd, I stand on two feet. I stand on two feet because I can see the fullness of the valley. I can see the hills and the mountains. I can see what's coming and what's going. But my sheep just keep their head down and I'll lead them. She refused to teach them truth because she knew that if they saw new truth, then they would cease to become sheep and they would look up. They would walk around and wonder. They would see the fullness of the valley and not just the small pieces of grain in front of them. But that is how your economics are presented to you. They're presented for you to you that you just keep your head down and just see the little bit of pasture that's right in front of you. The little bit of wealth that you can acquire. But they can't allow you to acquire too much wealth because if you do, then you become self-determined. Do you know that right now, it is practically illegal for you to become, to get off the grid. If you bought land and then you put a well on that land, you grew crops, you had your own animals, you then had solar power or wind power. You now are, are doing something illegal as far as America is concerned because you're off the grid and they can no longer control you. When you don't require them to keep to sustain your life, then they can't control you anymore. So your economics is the next one that they use to control you. Now that's the, 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 the governmental programming. How do you stop this? Most people think it through voting, but whether you vote for Donald, whether you vote for Hillary, it's, it's a two-headed snake. And actually, I don't even want to disrespect the snake that way. But it's a two-headed beast. It is the beast that you refuse to acknowledge. You know, <laughs> and when I talk about religion, which is coming, now you know I'm just going to go ahead and talk about the religious aspect, which is the biggest control factor out there. It's your religion. How does religion control you? You see, and for all my brothers who are going to jump to Egypt and the black man in Egypt and the kings and queens in Egypt, look, religion was, religion was used even at that point to control the people. It is when Amon Ra decided to tell the people that in order for them to reach heaven, that they should submit to the will of the gods and the priests right now. And if they submit, then their, 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 their reward will be to go to heaven and live in paradise. The first speaking of paradise came from, from Amun Ra. Now, here's a weird thing that I don't understand, people. If Amun Ra was supposed to have been the God, how did he have a father? According to their religious writing, he had a father. You cannot be the God and you have something that created you. But people will follow that. Why? Because they were promised life after death paradise in heaven and I'm not saying that there isn't one I firmly believe that there are different levels Jacob's ladder that there are different levels of ascension but what I don't believe is that somebody else gives it to me that somebody else provides it for me 
that somebody else had to come and indwell upon me to do it for me because I do believe that Yeshua said, is it not written that ye are gods? So if I am a hologram of the creator, then why do I need somebody else? But if you go around speaking that, the Christian, the Muslim, the whomever else, they're going to come after you. The reason why? Because there's no more control. You see, controls were set up not just when Constantine decided that he was going to organize Christianity, not just when the Vatican decided that they were going to help create Islam. Yes, they did. Do the research. Not just when, oh, let's go before Constantine. Not just when Emperor Flavius decided that he was going to rewrite the Jewish stories and had um, Joseph, Josephus and Eusebius get together to write the rest of some of the canonical books that you have in your Bible. See, he, see if, if, if you go and do more research and, and, and and, and that's what happened to me. You see, Henry Berry said that if you stamp out the capacity of the slaves to be able to obtain light, which is knowledge, then you further make them into a slave. Now, anytime you go to someone and you start telling them that about Eusebius, you start telling them about Josephus and how Emperor Flavius, who was a general, utilized the stories of the Jews in order to conquer them in 70 AD. And then after he conquered them, the Rome made him emperor. And then his son Titus, which is where the books of Titus comes from in the Bible, is that he had Josephus and Eusebius to finish writing the Bible. See, you think these stories were written by other men, but no, the Roman emperor decided that Eusebius and and, and um, Josephus was going to finish writing and one of the books they wrote was John was going to write these books but you can't do that why why because you already have a landing spot you see that's what the indoctrination of religion do, does for you does to you is that it creates a landing spot that you already believe in and nothing can bring you from it unless you go and you experience it this is what Henry Berry meant when he said if we can extinguish their capacity to see the light to find knowledge to seek knowledge most people refuse to seek knowledge, point blank period. From the time of birth, they refuse to seek knowledge. I apologize for the noise, but I'm at, I am at work. But most people refuse to seek knowledge because seeking knowledge means that they have to open themselves up. That they have to, they have to say that I do not have a landing spot. I do not already have a place that I expect to end up. That wherever this knowledge takes me is where it takes me. That if I end up, um, the, the knowledge takes me to a point where it goes against everything that I believe, then that's where I am going to go. Or if it provides a history that, is before, that, is, um, that, that doesn't go along with my narrative, then I, will, I am fine ending up there. You see, that's the difference. That's the thing that happened to me. In my research and in my study, I start realizing that People already have a, uh, you have an imprint, you, your parents taught you what to believe, whether it was Islam, whether it was Christianity, Buddhism, whatever it is, you were taught something. And your job since then has been to validate that, that you were taught as a child. I had, I question things, things that make sense. And if you want to become free, if you truly want to become free of mind, free of person, then you have to start questioning everything that you were taught. And I know some of people, some of you are older and you've been taught this and your main thing is making sure you go to heaven. But when you open your mind and you start researching, you'll realize that heaven has not been promised to you by some deity that came down to earth and taught you anything or by some ascended master who, whose mental state was beyond that of the normal person. That... If you actually looked at it, you will see that, that the Buddha who came before um, Jesus taught the same thing. That Krishna taught the same thing. You will see Mithras. You will see Dionysus. You will see that all these things have the same commonality, the same story. And then what was it? It was um, um, Bishop, um, Bishop Irenaeus who came out and he said, no, 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 we can't have all of these things because even though there are more Gospels, there should only be four Gospels. And even though we have the Gospel of Thomas, but ah, that thing tells you that men and women are created equally. It also has Jesus telling you that you have to bring, if you don't bring what's on the inside into the outside, that the kingdom of God is on the inside, and that if you don't bring that out, then that is the thing that will destroy you. 
you know, it. If, if if you don't, if you do your research, you find things where Justin Martyr came and he said that that the only reason you have Mithras and you have all these other people who came before Jesus is because the devil knew that Jesus was coming, so he went. He started portraying himself and doing, and he was, you know, the devil created himself into being born of a virgin, having twelve disciples, uh, performing miracles, doing all these things that that was Justin. And this is why you believe this. This is why this is your canon because Justin Martyr decided that that's what's happened. One dude, one dude in history says something a thousands of years ago, and you accept it. When you do your research, one of the other things you'll start to realize is that, and I'm not just, I know I'm picking on Christianity a lot because I know more about that one than most others, but it is because it is, for today's time, it is the linchpin, the catalyst that allow for this enslavement of minds that happen. And it allows for you to not do any research. People run around talking about study to see, your, to see yourself approved, study to show yourself approved, but yet you refuse to actually study. You just repeating like a parrot the information that was already given, that's been given to you and handed to you over and over again. The book of Enoch was a part of the canonized Bible from the Council of Nicaea up to, up to the 1400s. And then during the 1400s, it was taken out of the canon for multiple reasons. It was taken out of the canon because Noah, or Zuasutra according to Sumerians, was shown to be a white guy who was born half God, half man. And then his daddy was not going to, was going to be like, I ain't, this ain't my child, kind of like Joseph did with Mary. He was like, this ain't my child. But then the guys came and told, said, hey, 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 we got a mission for him and he's half God. So just, just be all right and raise him as your own son. See, the book of Enoch said that. The book of Enoch talked about the gods being on their ship, about the shining ones. It's not even call angels the shining ones but here's the thing about the book of Enoch it was good for the Bible for a thousand years but now you will say it's heretical because they took it out so you're saying it was God's word and then now it's not God's word now I know the Catholics came out and said that we have the right to change God's word which that is what the beast that Daniel described was going to do the small horn that came out and ripped out the three and had eyes and a mouth that boasts but yet you are too afraid to make that claim. You know why? Because then you have to recognize that they've been changing that word and you've been reading that because as soon as you do your research on how the King James, the difference between the King James and the authorized King James, the Jesuits and the gunpowder assassination, you start to realize how much information is probably not right. But if you do that, if you do that, you then got to question everything else you were taught. And that religion is the biggest enslavement trap because the further you go back, the more research you do, you start and it's not. And, and see, I was told as a young man that if I keep doing this research, that the devil is trying to confuse me. Well, the only devil is that doubt that's in your brain that something is trying to confuse you or maybe you're trying you're becoming enlightened. Because you are not afraid to go and do research to find out who Justin Martyr was and what he said. Why Martin Luther started his, his reformation. To which he was really not trying to, reform, trying to start a new division of Christianity. But just trying to reform the church. Because he said you're teaching stuff wrong. You find out, oh, first priests can marry, then they can't marry. You start, why? Why all these changes? If it is the word of God, then why are you changing it? And when you really start doing some research for my Islamic brothers, you will realize that that the Catholics, the, the, the Pope, initiated the beginning of Islam. It wasn't that Muhammad just had his revelation and started teaching. No, the Pope realized they couldn't. They had difficulty spreading Christianity to the Arabs. They had difficulty spreading Christianity throughout sub-Sahara Africa. So what they found was if they created a prophet who was like them, who looked like the Arabs, act like the Arabs, had an Arab background, and then sent that dude out to teach a different, slightly different version of Christianity to the Arabs, and then and 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 it worked. It worked perfectly. And then from that teaching, they went to the sub-Saharan African, held them at knife point or held them at taxation point, and said that you're gonna convert to Islam or or you're going to die. And guess what? Their plan of enslavement is still working today because the two fastest growing religions in the world is Christianity and Islam. And by 2050, they will be equal to one another. 
You see, all these things continue to go, continue to, all these, all this information um, just continue to enslave people. And the, the, the thing about this enslavement is that the more and more and more you are blinded by only seeing what they have presented you, only seeing what you were given, the more and more you will become enslaved. It's to the point where you are so enslaved that you will fight and argue and you are so disturbed by people who say something different to you. I've always said, if you want to believe in Christianity or Islam or whatever, that is your prerogative. I don't have any problems with that. But if your belief is dependent, if, if you get angry because somebody disagrees with you, if you get angry and you can't have a decent conversation with somebody and talk about things and your mind is not enlightened enough to be able to receive anything, if you get angry, then how strong is your faith? How, far, how strong is your faith? You know, as a child, I was always told that, you know, I need to stop all this reading and stop all this education, stop looking, stop reading, that I just need to accept what the church has told me. And then when I went to Israel, I found out what the church was telling me was wrong. When I went to Africa, when I went to Egypt, I found out that what the church was telling me was wrong. I kept going around the world and finding out what the church is telling me is wrong. I'm not so blinded that I can't see past what somebody else decided for me. And if all you can do is see what somebody decided for you, then you will forever be a slave and a sheep. They can destroy you and you will do nothing about it. You see, as long as you fight for them, they don't care how angry you get. You can run around and you can say, I mean, you know what, let me just be plain. Why is it when the information is presented to you, all you do is fight against it? If I came to your job and I showed you that what you was doing at your job, that the results of it was wrong, if it was an immediate that the results were wrong, then you would change. But if I can, sh but if you don't see the immediate results, you would continue to fight and keep doing the exact same thing, keep processing things the same way. There was an example given by one guy. He said that if every time you, um, every time you made a mistake, if you were stung by a wasp, you would stop making that mistake because the pain is immediate. But just like in getting fat and unhealthy, it is a slow process that takes a long time to occur. So because it takes that long time to occur, you don't recognize that your fat and, and your health is horrible until much later, until 10, 15, 20 years later, maybe even five years later. But it's a slow process. And that's how your enslavement, that's how the enslavement of people have become. It was a slow process. You see, I got people right now. They could take an issue with what I'm saying. And here's the thing that's interesting about it. Is that they're quoting from the Bible right but they don't even understand how those words came to be in there let me break down something that I said a little bit earlier I talked about the gunpowder assassination you see King James decided that I did not want the church the Catholics to be in charge of my country so he decided he was going to have his own Bible written the authorized King James Version well once the Pope got wind of this he got kind of pissed off right and this is, I'm just paraphrasing, he got kind of pissed off, and he created the Jesuits. Now, the Jesuits' job was to go around and make sure nobody else printed out the Bible, because for some reason, and if you can justify this, please justify it, the, it was illegal for anybody to read the Bible except for priests. Why would you believe something that you're not even allowed to read? That don't make any sense. Just like slaves in America, it was illegal for a slave to learn how to read. Why? Because you can read, you can research, and then your mind stays. Your mind stays strong. Your mind gets strong. You start realizing truth when you can read it for yourself. So they didn't like King James writing his own Bible because he was going to give it to the people. So first the Jesuits, this is your Pope Catholic Christian dude, decided we're going to kill King James and all 54 of his scribes. All right. So they tried to kill him with a gunpowder bomb. It failed. It didn't work. So we realized, dang, we didn't kill him. He's going to continue. So what they did is two years prior... Two years prior to King James coming out with the authorized King James Version, they came out, the Jesuits came out with the King James Version. Now, since that time frame, every Bible you're reading has been translated 
from the King James Version, from the Jesuit Version, which was authorized from the Catholics, from the Vatican. So every Bible, your New Living, Stand, your New Living, your NIVs, your translations, your American Standards, all these are translations from the King James, not the authorized King James, which comes from the Jesuits, which is an organization created by the Vatican. So you think that you're not under the Vatican control, but you are. Why? because that's what the book that you're reading and if you ain't read nothing else you are an slave to it here's the thing about that you will see a change in your Bible in the next hmm, 20 years here's the big change see the problem is they found the tomb of Akhenaten and when they found the tomb of Akhenaten they realized that Akhenaten started teaching about there is only one God and that God is he wasn't saying that God is the Sun like the actual Sun like out there earth sun moon all that but he was saying that the sun that just like the sun gives life the God the creator the one God gives life and Akhenaten disrupted Egypt said no there's not 88 gods there's only one and then after 17 years they got they got rid of him they killed him so because of that they are now trying to change the story of Moses to say that Moses was act that Akhenaten was actually Moses, that Moses is a title and that his name was Akhenaten and that he actually left. They're changing the story to say that Akhenaten's dad said that, look, I don't want to have any heir. So every time one of his wives had a son, he killed him. So then the what one of his wives did is that after they had when Akhenaten was born, they sent him to the Hebrews and he became uh, she put him in a boat, sent him up there to the Hebrew slaves. The Hebrew slaves took him as a, as their own. He grew up learning all the Hebrew stuff, which is why he became a believer in only one God. And then when his dad died, he came back, became the Pharaoh of Egypt again. And then he started teaching the one God thing. But then when they said for him to leave, then they decided it was time for him to go. And the whole rest of the Moses story goes after that. But now they're changing the Moses story. Now, my question for all you Bible thumpers, all you, uh, all my Islamic brothers and sisters out there, and all my Hebrews, what are you going to do when they change your Moses story? Are you just going to accept it? Or is this just another opportunity for you to see that the story, the narration of the story must change because if they don't change that narration, then they will lose control. Because the information about Akhenaten is there. And the mystery schools of Akhenaten, which created, which Pythagoras went to, which Pythagoras then started the Greek empire, I mean started the Greek civilization, that all these other people went to the schools of Akhenaten, all this information is now ready, readily available. So what are you going to do? Are you going to continue to be a slave when the information is right in front of you? It's just like economics in this country. You know that you will be enslaved to the economic power of this country until you stop spending more money than you make. As long as you spend more money than you make, you will continue to be a slave to this country. You will continue to have to depend on this country. As long as you keep eating the, pro the, the, the worst food and not maintaining your health, you are a slave to the health of this country, the medical situations of this country. You can fight and, and get mad and get aggravated about health care, about um, the food, about the government, about the police force, about everything in this world, everything in this country. But until you stop just accepting whatever they tell you, until you stop this, you will forever be a slave. Forever be a slave. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to end this right here. Um, most people are going to reject most of the stuff that I said especially when it comes to the religious aspect and just to be clear I believe that there is a creator that there is a divine creator that created the entire universe and multiverse and whatever else I do believe in intelligent design I believe that people like Jesus even though his name would have been Yeshua because there was no J and we can go through a whole thing of why his name would have never been Jesus. So for all y'all saying I'm calling on the power, in, there's power in the name, at least get the name right. All right, his name would have been Yeshua, which translated in English to Joshua. All right, um, but the thing about it, like I said, set the record straight. I believe that Yeshua came, but I believe he was a great teacher. I believe Muhammad may have come, great teacher. I believe Buddha came, great teacher. Krishna, great teacher. Just as the dialogue, great teachers. I believe that people 
people have been, um, the creator has ensured that people have come to ensure that people know actual truth. But what I do believe and, know, and, and find historically correct, and you can go against as much as you want, but I mean, the facts are just facts. Here's the thing. Too many of y'all are caught up into your feels. And and in, in your feeling, I feel like this is right, and I feel like, and I feel like, just as much as a Christian can say that I know there is a proof of God and Jesus because this miracle happened. I got a Muslim brother who can say I know there is proof of Allah and Muhammad because this miracle happened, and everybody of every other religion can say that I got proof because this happened because I feel. But I believe I do believe that all these people, these prophets, these messengers these divine spirits, these people who are what I call ascended masters have all come to teach people in certain areas certain things in order and, and pretty much teaching them all the same thing in order for people to progress up the up Jake, what Jacob saw in Jacob's ladder I do believe that but I believe that is is like what Yeshua said in the Gospel of Thomas that if you don't bring what is on the inside to the outside then you will never see the kingdom of God that is what's inside not being brought out which, which will defile you that the kingdom of God is all around you and inside of you and just as Yeshua said in John that ye are gods is not written that ye are gods and I believe David said that as well I believe these people did come to show you the light but then man in his greed for power utilized that information corrupted that information set up structures so that you would have to go to the priest <laughs> I believe man in his greed, in his satanic thoughts. You see, when he said Peter, get behind me, he was talking about Peter's thought. So Satan is a thought, the doubt. I believe that those people corrupted the true light. Just like Henry Berry said, if we keep their capacity to see the light, if we get rid of that capacity to see the light, then we get rid of their ability to recognize their divinity within. So if you want to stop being a slave, stop being sheep, you first got to recognize the divinity within that all these constructs are around you to enslave you, to keep you on a path that you just follow that path and you don't deter from it and realize that the kingdom of God is all around you and it's inside of you and you have just as much right to it as anybody else and that um, the narrow mindedness that God is so small that he could only be in one little small place at one time and during that time frame everybody else in the world goes to hell even though they never even knew who Yeshua was or they didn't know who Allah was or you know they didn't know who Jehovah was at that time frame so they all went to hell because they ain't know so you know that don't make any sense that's stupid that's why I believe all these other people have been sent and like you said if you, I can sit and look at nature and see God. I don't need somebody to tell me about it to see him. So I believe man has always known God and the divinity of God and the divinity within themselves. Because you can look at the earth, what he has, create, what he has created. And, I say, and to say he is even putting them in a box. You can, see his, you can see the creation of the creator and know that he exists. And if you watch how those things flow. So I'm not an atheist. I just refuse to be enslaved by the doctrine of corrupted people. And if you really want to become free and stop being sheep, then you won't allow yourself to be enslaved by the doctrine of corrupted people, whether it's through government, law, police, whether it's through education, whether it's through economics, or it's through religion. You have to break those chains of each one of those in order for you to truly see freedom, in order for you to truly stop being sheep. In order for you to stand up like a shepherd and see the entire pasture, see the mountainside. That way you can see when the wolves are coming. But right now, most of you can't see the wolves because your head is down. You're only concerned about food and water. And from the time of Amun Ra has taught you that if you are obedient and forsake all things and don't worry about what's going on with you, that heaven is promised to you afterwards. And you need to be saved in order for that to happen. That heaven is something else on the outside. That divinity of God is on the outside, not on the inside. All right. So, look, I know I might have pissed off a lot of people, but I'm just kind of tired of people walking around with blinders on. Y'all have a great day. Your greatness could be non-negotiable, but you got to first see the light in order for it to become that. Have a good one.